Hey everybody, welcome. This is a full build guide for my fireman build, using the flamer as the main weapon and the focus of this build. Okay, the way that this is gonna work is that first I'm gonna have the full build guide and explain and go over everything. And then the second part of this video is a mission walkthrough where I go through a full mission on Auric Damnation with random people, where we're gonna be able to see all the stuff that I explained in the build guide in action in an actual mission. And of course, in the mission walkthrough, there's still gonna be a lot of tips, tricks, comments, and just general goodness, lots of stuff to learn. And if you wish, you can of course just skip ahead to that part. However, if you do wanna try out the build for yourself, I still recommend watching the guide first, because there can still be some stuff about how the build works that is not obvious if you're not familiar with all the mechanics. In addition, the guide is pretty in-depth and I go over attack patterns, how to deal with different types of enemies and all kind of good stuff, etc, etc. Now, in addition to that, there's also a second video that is up right now. That is also a walkthrough with the same build using the flamer or fireman build that this video is all about and that mission is a little different it's a longer playthrough because my team was struggling that mission and i think it's still a very good mission to watch i end up saving my team three times when they all died and again it's a little bit different in terms of gameplay but it's still very good if you want to learn how to play the game correctly especially if you get in the same situations and you have to carry the whole team so check that video out as well if you're interested especially if you want to see more gameplay with this flamer build like most zealot builds we're going to focus on crit chance and this is actually very important when using the flamer and i'll explain exactly why and how it scales with that gun in a little bit. This build doesn't have anything super gimmicky about it besides the flamer, but like I said, the central focus of the build is the flamer, so if you want to use that weapon as a zealot, the build is specifically optimized for that and is a lot of fun. The flamer is actually a really strong weapon and provides a fairly unique playstyle for the zealot, as it allows you incredible area crowd control and AoE damage, even to crushers that are a hard nut to crack. The main strength of the flamer is actually not its area damage, although obviously that's something it shines at, but rather area suppression, that is only more and more important as you go up in difficulty in the game. The flamer can basically suppress an entire hallway in 2 seconds, no matter if it has 5 or 20 gunners in it, and in that way you can use it to lead the charge for your team and control the pace of the game. The main limitation of the flamer is its ammo capacity and therefore it's important to learn how to use it properly. I'm going to teach you all of that in this guide so you can distinguish yourself from other flamer users that hold the fire button at the first horde they see without letting go and run out of ammo in the first three minutes, which is something I used to see a lot of in the beginning. Okay, so I started this build and actually this character, Fireman Burnham, as a flamer only character, with the rules that I'm only allowed to use equipment up to fireman regulation. This means the flamer, combat axes or fire axes, and maybe chain weapons as they are technically like chainsaws. Also, if you choose to join the fireman force, don't forget your fireproof yellow uniform and safety helmet, all up to regulation and standards. Thank you. So the sad truth is that I eventually got frustrated with trying to use the combat axes, gave up the dream and switched to using my trusty combat blade, which is what I showcased the walkthrough with, and it's technically better with this build. But after I went back to give the combat axe another try, I actually managed to make it work with the build, and it's honestly pretty good if you build it correctly. So you can use that variation as well if you want, which I'll also go over here. The skill tree remains the same in any case and only the melee weapon changes. Anywho, I've had a blast with this build and this character and I hope you enjoy it as well. Let's get into the build. Okay, so let's talk about how to build your weapons and stat priority. When it comes to the flamer, unlike most other weapons, damage is not the most important stat here. When you look at the weapon's modifiers, you want to get cloud radius first and then ammo as close to 80% as possible. Then we want to look for high burn, but it's not that critical. And then damage and mobility. The reason you don't need burn to be the highest is because if you inspect it, it tells you 
that it determines the max stacks of burn that a target can have and also the rate of application of burn stacks. So let's say there's an enemy and you apply 10 stacks of burn to it. Because that enemy has 10 stacks of burn, it doesn't matter if your weapon has 20% burn or 80% burn, the enemy is still going to take the same amount of damage from those burn stacks. When it comes to the flamer's perks, you want at least one of them to be 4 or 5% critical strike chance. For the other perk, we don't need anything specific. Damage to maniacs is fine, damage to unyielding, damage to flak is really good, even damage to carapace. As for your blessings, first you want to get Fan the Flames 4 for your second blessing. Most of the other blessings are not that great, to be honest. Reload speed when empty is almost useless the way I play. Showstopper looks cool, but if you look at what it actually does, it's basically useless most of the time. So this leaves us either with Blaze Away. And I'll show you right now a comparison. In the first one, I'm attacking a Crusher without Blaze Away on my weapon. I'm going to use Fury when I get 15 ammo. And let's see how much of the health bar of the Crusher I could damage here. Now let's do the same thing, this time with a Flamer that has Blaze Away on it. So you see, it obviously does more damage, but is it really going to be that big, especially considering that most of your damage is going to come from damage over time and not the actual damage of the weapon? I'm not sure. And the other blessing it leaves us with is Inspiring Barrage, which gives you back toughness if you continue to fire Braced Fire with the Flamer. Now this blessing is very strong, and let me just demo it for you. You can see how much toughness I'm getting back here. So this is what you want your Flamer to look like. Let me just add here that in both videos of the walkthrough, where I demonstrate gameplay of this build, I don't have Inspiring Barrage on my Flamer. So if this build looks strong in the walkthroughs, just know that it's even stronger if you use Inspiring Barrage and get the extra toughness when firing the Flamer. For the Combat Blade. Because we focus on applying bleed stacks and not actual damage from hits, we can have some flexibility with this weapon. The most important thing here, however, is to use the MK6, not the MK3, because it has a better moveset to you. For the modifiers, the first thing you want to make sure is that you have finesse as high as possible. This is because it gives us attack speed. The second stat we care about is mobility, because the main reason we use this weapon is to give us mobility to counter the sluggishness of the flamer. After that, obviously damage, penetration and first target are good, but if they're not close to 70 or 80, that's fine too, you can still use the weapon. The perks are probably going to be more important here, and just know that the blade you see right now that I'm using is actually not that optimized. You want critical strike chance, and then damage to elites, damage to carapace, damage to flak is really good, damage to unyielding. The blessings are the main thing here. And we want Lacerate 4, first of all, and then Uncanny Strike 4 or 3, it doesn't really matter which. For the Combat X, obviously we use the MK5. Here the modifiers are very important, except for mobility. So you want to get a weapon that has 70% or more of everything, except mobility. Mobility can remain fairly low. For the perks, get Critical Hit Chance. And if you have damage to elites or damage on headshots, that's pretty good as well. With the axe, if you get more damage on it, you want to make sure that it actually hits certain breakpoints. If, for example, I can two-shot bulwarks if I get a headshot and a crit, getting 25% extra damage to unyielding enemies would literally be useless. So make sure you hit breakpoints. But, for example, I have damage to unarmored enemies here, which is also fine on this weapon. For the blessings, very important. Brutal Momentum, doesn't really matter which, 2, 3, 4, whatever. Then you want to craft Shred 4 on it for up to 20% extra critical strike chance. 
And for your curios, you want to get two health curios and one toughness curio. All of them, however, should have the same perks that are combat ability regeneration, health and toughness. Okay, so let's start by going over the skill tree. Like I mentioned, this is a crit build. And again, I'm going to explain how it benefits the flamer in a minute. But because we use a crit build here, we want to use melee weapons that benefit from crit chance. So like I mentioned, the dagger and the combat axes will do the job here. And like I mentioned before, no matter what melee weapon you use, the skill tree remains the same. We take Scourge here to apply bleed on crit and increase our critical strike chance. And during Faith, the strongest node available to the Zealot, that gives us 50% damage reduction for toughness on crit. And second, Wind, that regenerates toughness on a dodge. Do not skip this node, it's very important. As a ranged focused build, we take the damage to close enemies for ranged weapons. Damage to unyielding enemies is very good for us because this is a damage over time build that does a lot of damage to unyielding enemies. And we take the heal on damage taken here. Obviously as a fireman we take the immolation grenades. Shield of Contempt gives us very good survivability. This is pretty much mandatory on any zealot build. Uh, you know, until death gives you a cheat death and allows you to regenerate health. Two charges of Fear of the Faithful. We have enough points for the extra melee attack speed here, even though it's not a melee focused build necessarily, but we do use melee a lot. This node gives us cooldown reduction when we score a melee critical hit, and the keystone gives us a ton of critical hit chance. Now let's talk about crit. If you go to the flamer and inspect it, in the table that shows the damage to all enemy types, you can see that our ranged damage doesn't really scale that well with critical strike chance. So why do we actually want crit here? The reason for that is not obvious, and in a very fat shark manner, the game doesn't actually tell you anything about this, so it's like a hidden mechanic. But if you look at how the flamer works, when you fire at enemies, it builds burn stacks, damage over time. Now, all three of these enemies have a base body type of flak armor, and let's see how much damage they take from a single stack of burn. Two damage, two damage, two damage. If I get a crit here, it's six per tick, and then it ticks down. So what actually happens here when I crit? Well, critical hits with the flamer apply triple the stacks of burn. This means that if you crit with the flamer, you can build damage over time stacks three times as fast. Okay, so let's start with how to use the flamer. So most people I see using it are using it wrong. And the thought process I can only assume is something like, I have a gun, there's enemies in front of me, let's fire at them until they all go down. Bam, I shoot them until they die. Easy. This is absolutely the wrong way to use the flamer, even if you use it on a horde or a very large group of enemies. Why? This is because the weapon does, like I mentioned, two things. First, when you fire, it deals ranged damage, and the second thing, like we said, is that it builds damage over time, burn stacks. So as you can see, the enemies keep burning even when I'm not firing. So this means I can build burn stacks, let go, and the enemy continues to burn and goes down even if I'm not firing. Now, the flamer is a very strong weapon, but not necessarily for the reason most people would think, like I said, which is infinite cleave and very good AoE damage. So it would look like this, all enemies in front of me take a ton of damage. In my opinion, the main strength of the flamer is its AoE suppression capabilities. And this is how suppression looks like with this weapon. Even though I do no damage, you can see all the ranged enemies taking cover. This means they're not gonna fire or do anything while they're in this state. The flamer has two modes of fire and it's important to know how to use them and to know what the difference between them is. The first one is primary fire which fires in bursts. 
The second one is braced fire, which requires you to get into braced position and slows you down, but allows you to fire the flamer in a continuous manner. Now it's important to know the difference because the first one deals a lot of stagger, so that'd be like stuns or knockback. And the second one is a lot better for suppression. One thing I'll mention right now about the flamer is that it's very slow and has a very slow animation, so switching to it takes a second. So when you switch to it, you want to do it behind cover, or you want to do it while sliding. Same thing goes for the braced animation. Okay, so let's say there's a whole bunch of ranged enemies in front of me. And now they're all firing at me and my team and I want to suppress them all. So how do I actually engage here? So, you want to switch to your flamer, run in, slide, because you're going to get shot at, and while you're sliding, you want to brace. You don't want to just use the primary attack, but you can open with it. This is because it does a lot of stagger, and what we want to do here is cause a lot of area suppression. So, you run in, slide, brace, and fire. Now fire for a couple of seconds, but don't keep holding it. When they're all burning and suppressed, run in, slide, brace, get the other group. And rinse and repeat. You get the gist. Okay, so position is very important with a flamer. And a good position is made of two things, basically. First of all, you want to position yourself so that there are no enemies behind you that can interrupt you firing or make you take damage. The second thing is that you want to keep all enemies in front of you in the cone of fire, so that when you're firing at them, you can get as many of them as possible caught in the fire. If you stand in the middle and there are enemies to your left, enemies to your right, you have to fire at both, alternating, which is not ideal and is gonna cost you a lot more ammo. So you wanna keep all of them in front of you. If you're pushing, let's say, a hallway full of ranged enemies, there's another way to do it. Run in with a primary attack, using the burst attack to stagger enemies in front of you while moving towards them. And that's gonna stagger most enemies in front of you. Now this is very good to do if you need to move quickly, but also if you're dealing with ragers. And ragers are gonna look to just run at you and attack you non-stop, and they are pretty tough to stagger. So, the way you fight ragers is use the braced fire to build stacks on them. When they inevitably get close to you, switch to primary fire and fire in bursts to stagger them while dodging and sliding backwards. If you're dealing with reapers, they're very hard to stagger, so don't use your primary on them, it's not gonna do much. Don't do this. Instead, you wanna suppress them. So brace and fire at them until they're suppressed. Unyielding enemies take the highest damage from damage over time, like burn and bleed. If you're fighting bulwarks, you wanna first bait their attack, dodge, brace, and burn them while there's an opening. Crushers we're going to talk about specifically in a minute. Gunners. If they're by themselves and not in a group, use primary to close the distance, switch to your melee and finish them off in melee. If they're in a large group, you want to use braced fire and catch all of them in the cone of fire. Allow me to reiterate this. Your main goal with the flamer is not to get as many kills as possible. It is to control the battlefield by suppressing all ranged enemies. So you want to suppress a group, build damage over time stacks on it, and run forward and do the same thing to the next group, keeping all ranged enemies suppressed. If I got all ranged enemies in front of me suppressed, then what I do is switch to my melee, run in, and finish them off with the melee. If I'm being shot at again, I'm going to switch to my flamer, go braced, suppress them again, and close the distance, finish them off with the melee again. Because, like I said, one of the main restrictions that we have with the flamer is ammo, we don't want to use the flamer on just any group of enemies, even a horde. 
Unless, of course, the horde is blocking the way and putting the rest of the team in danger. In those situations, it can be good to use the flamer to clear out the horde quickly. If it's just a bunch of enemies and no one is in danger, switch to your dagger and use light attacks to their body to build bleed stacks. The best times to use the flamer are if there are a bunch of ragers, shotgunners or maulers together, especially with a lot of enemies around them. So that's something obviously that the flamer is very good at. If you have a large group of enemies with shotgunners or ragers inside of it, you can crowd control and deal damage to all of them at once. But the flamer is actually very good at another thing that you wouldn't necessarily expect which is dealing with crushers, especially in large groups, as in Auric Damnation missions, where they often come at you in groups of 4, 5 or even more of them. The flamer is actually really good at dealing with those situations. Now, you wouldn't expect that because if I just attack the crusher, as you can see it hardly tickles him, he doesn't really take any damage. If I use my Immolation Grenade, you'll basically see the same thing. He takes very little damage. But, remember my ability, Fury of the Faithful. Let's throw an Immolation Grenade, switch to the Flamer, fully unload, and now use Fury of the Faithful. Bam! He now takes actually a whole bunch of damage. Now imagine doing this when there's five Crushers in front of you, not just one. The reason I can do that is because my ability, Fury of the Faithful, has a hidden mechanism that in a very fat shark manner, the game mentions nothing about anywhere. This actually makes the ability, in my opinion, very very balanced because it doesn't only affect melee weapons but also ranged weapons. Now let's switch to a trusty braced gun. So if I use Fury of the Faithful with a melee weapon, it's gonna supercharge my next melee attack and then end. However, if I don't use my melee attack, it's going to behave a little differently, even though there's no visual indication that anything else is happening. But the ability actually gives you a buff that lasts for a couple of seconds. This allows you to use ranged weapons very effectively in combination with this ability. Let's start firing at the Crusher with our gun. As you can see, it takes 8 damage per shot. Now if I use my Fury ability, watch. It turns into 112 per shot, which incidentally, or not, is exactly the same damage I would do normally to flak armor. Now if I use the ability on flak armor, it would deal 165 damage, which is also the same amount of damage you would normally do to unarmored enemy types. This is what the hidden mechanism of fury does, it downgrades Carapace armor into flak armor while active, and it also downgrades flak armor into unarmored. Now, in case you're concerned about it, what it doesn't do is mess with the damage bonuses on the perks of your weapons. It doesn't affect your perks on the weapons. So, if on the screen you can see right now my blade says 20% damage to carapace armor. If this was a gun, it would still apply to crushers, even though for damage calculations, the ability while active would make it so that it counts as though I'm doing damage to flak armor. So let's say a bunch of crushers show up, this is what you do. First you want to throw your emulation grenade. Now don't aim it at where they're at, aim it at where they're gonna be and where you're gonna fight them. So if you're gonna move backwards, aim it there. You wanna keep enemies inside the fire area of the grenade and this is because, unlike the flamer which builds damage over time stacks, the emulation grenade only does damage to enemies that are inside of that area. All the enemies that are now stationary are staying inside the fire area. If I throw the grenade at the hound here, while it is inside, it burns and takes damage. If I push it out, it stops taking damage. If I push it back in, it takes damage again. That means again, you want to keep enemies inside the area of the grenade for them to take damage. Okay, so let's say a bunch of crushers just showed up. 
Throw the Immolation Grenade at where they're going to be. Switch to your Flamer and Brace. Fire at the Crushers and keep firing. After a couple of seconds of firing, you want to use Fury. Keep firing until you're out of ammo and they all take a bunch of damage. Now what you don't want to do is charge with Fury and then fire. This is because it takes time to build burn stacks on them and they're gonna take less than half of the damage that they should be taking. Use your cooldown ability wisely. First brace, build stacks on them and then charge. That way the burn stacks are gonna be the highest on them during your ability's effect. Okay, so let's say I'm using Fury of the Faithful on Crushers. There's one problem with this ability, which is that it charges forward and brings you closer to enemies that then can hit you in melee range. Although, if a Crusher is about to hit you, you can use Fury to stagger them with the Body Slam. But let's say there's a little bit of distance between us. When you charge, you want to cancel it as fast as you can to keep the distance. So you want to use Fury and immediately interrupt it by walking backwards. The other thing you can do, and you can also do it in other situations to get some distance and escape bad positions, is to use Fury to go backwards, get some distance, and then turn around and keep firing. So you want to either use Fury immediately cancel it, or use it to go backwards. Okay, so I mentioned you never actually want to fully unload and empty your entire magazine at once. This is because if you do it, you're going to waste a lot of ammo. So you want to build enough stacks, let it go, and let them burn. There's one exception to that, which is, let's say your team is in a position where it's flanked from both sides. There are two lanes where enemies are coming from, and there's a horde. That's basically the only example where you want to keep firing until your magazine is empty. This is why I don't like blessings that rely either on continuous fire or emptying your magazine. So let's say the team is attacked from two directions. Use braced fire to fire at each lane for a couple seconds, then switch. The goal is to build damage over time stacks and not to fire at them until they're dead. This is going to maximize your crowd control and ammo efficiency. Okay, so I've talked about how to deal with ranged enemies and also elites like Ragers, Maulers, etc. I also talked about Crushers and Unyielding enemies like Reapers and Bulwarks. Now what about Specialists? Now the Flamer is pretty good at dealing with Specialists, but they have to be in medium range, not long range or melee range. So that'd be around 15 meters in front of you. If you see a sniper, continue using your primary fire until you can close the distance and finish it with the blade. You want to use the push attack here as it's safer. The same strategy would apply to trappers. From around 15 meters, use the primary to get close. When you're close, use the push attack to finish it off. One more thing to add about trappers is that if they haven't fired yet and they don't need to reload before they can fire at you, be very careful of them and get ready to dodge. If you're not immediately in melee range, get some distance from them to have enough time to dodge. If you can't get close to them and you have the flamer out, you can just keep firing at them until they're dead. It's just safer to deal with them that way and sometimes it's not worth the risk. The problem with using the primary attack with the flamer is that it doesn't immediately stagger enemies, but some specialists take 3, 4 or even more shots to stagger. We don't have a pox burster here, but this is pretty much what you'll see with bursters. So let's pretend this mutant is a burster. If it's again around 15 meters in front of me, you can start using your primary. You want to start backing up a little bit, but in 3-4 shots it's going to get staggered and fall down to the ground. If the burster is around less than 10 meters in front of you, switch to melee and get ready to push it. This is because you're not going to have enough time to get enough shots on it to stagger it. 
obviously with mutants you want to switch to melee because you're not going to be able to stagger them. Also with melee you do a lot more damage than the flamer so just don't waste your ammo on them. It should take you 3 hits with the melee weapon to finish them off. When it comes to hounds, if the hound is just about to pounce at you, just like with the pox burster, you want to switch to melee and get ready to push. If you see the hound coming from far away and there's enough distance to fire at it for a couple times, you can stagger it with a flamer using the burst fire or the primary fire. And I think that's pretty much everything when it comes to the flamer. Again, be very mindful of how you use your ammo. You want to build burn stacks and not keep firing until enemies are down. Let them die to the damage over time. Focus on suppression and crowd control rather than doing damage. If you do those two things, you'll see that at any given point in the mission you should have more than enough ammo left. Also generally, you want to make sure that you have at least one charge of fury left to use in situations where you need to do damage to crushers or get away from a bad situation. Now let's switch to talking about the melee. So melee weapons, why the combat blade? Well it's just such a good weapon all around. And it scales nicely like I mentioned with crit. This means it gives you very good defense with a 50% toughness damage reduction and it also synergizes with having a high crit chance, which is what the build is doing. It's also a very fast weapon that helps us reduce the cooldown of our fury ability, keeping our cooldown very low. Additionally, it's the best mobility weapon in the game, as it allows you to advance on gunners when they shoot at you by supercharging your dodges with the heavy attack. If you don't know how to do it by charging your heavy attack, you can run faster until you let go. By sliding at the last moment, you can maintain your momentum. This allows you to increase the distance of your dodges. The mobility of the combat blade actually complements very nicely the build because the flamer has very bad mobility. It balances out the build and the sluggishness of the flamer. With the combat blade, you want to use the MK6 rather than the MK3. This is because we use the light attacks here to build bleed stacks on enemies and the MK6 has better cleave and is gonna hit more targets. If you use the push attack on it, it's very accurate and allows you to hit headshots. It also has a very long range if you need to keep distance from elite enemies. To demonstrate this, let's see if our light attack is out of range of the crusher, but if I use my push attack, it still reaches. So this allows you to keep distance. This is very good against crushers, maulers, and ragers. Why bleed stacks on the zealot and not more damage and crit damage? This will pretty much apply to any zealot build that uses the combat blade. So the zealot gets more crit chance when hitting bleeding enemies. This means that putting a blessing on our blade that allows us to cause bleeding on enemies on hit is very good on the combat blade. But enemies take so much damage from bleed stacks, for example these gunners would die in 3 hits, that my bleed is so good I don't need extra damage here. In addition I already used one of my blessings so I only have one blessing left to use. Overall, having so much bleed, I have more than enough damage to deal with most enemies. This is why, in my opinion, bleed on zealot is better than damage. Bleed is also better for AoE because we don't need any cleave damage. Any target that we cleave through, even if we do 10 damage to it, would take bleed stacks and bleed damage. The second blessing, in my opinion, should be uncanny strike, which would give you global rending with the blade when hitting headshots. Now this might seem a little counterproductive because we focus on hitting body shots, not headshots. For the bleed stacks. But if you try it out, what you'll notice is that by just spamming light attacks, you're gonna automatically hit both body shots and headshots. And it's gonna stack naturally, you're not gonna have to specifically aim for headshots. The rending is obviously gonna be very good for dealing with carapace armored enemies like molars and crushers. The rending is gonna affect your bleed, not just basic attacks. On the Crusher, I'm getting at max stacks of bleed, 53 damage. If I start hitting headshots for the rending, you can see it goes up to 222. 
This means I can now use bleed damage on crushers. The bleed damage is also going to see a substantial increase for flak armor enemies, like the gunners, some damage for unyielding enemies, and let's not forget, half of the ragers are flak armor, not maniacs. Bleed damage on flak armor enemies, like gunners and maulers, is gonna increase by 60% here. So going from 132, with full rending to 208. That's basically a 60% increase. That's big. When you attack ragers, you also want to go for body shots and bleed. Hit them 3-4 times and back up, leave them alone, let them bleed. You can keep the bleed up by attacking from a distance. If the ragers are not staggered, use block and use the push attack. You want to block their attacks because they are hard to stagger and can deal a lot of damage to you. If there's a bunch of them in front of you, use Fury on them. They will get staggered from the body slam. Use the extra attack speed to build stacks on them and then back up again. Let them die to the bleed. If you're fighting a single Rager individually, you can go for headshots. Use the push attack for that. Like I mentioned, mutants should die to three heavy attacks, but they also take a lot of damage from light attacks and they take some bleed damage, so you can also spam lights on them if you want. Unyielding enemies, so that be reapers, bulwarks and some bosses, actually most bosses, take increased damage over time. This means that just like with burn stacks, with bleed stacks you want to get high stacks and leave them alone, let them go down to the bleed. If no one else finishes them off, you can get back to them and reapply the bleed stacks. Bulwarks, if they have enough bleed stacks on them, will get staggered. So when you're fighting bulwarks, quickly build bleed stacks on them with light attacks and they will get staggered and provide an opening. If they're aggroed to you and facing you, block until they use the heavy attack, dodge it and use light attacks to apply bleed. Again, this will give you an opening to finish them off. I already showed you that gunners die from three light hits to the body. This is also true for shotgunners. When you're fighting them, hit three light attacks to the body and leave them alone. The bleed on the combat blade allows you to move very quickly between enemies. You wanna apply bleed stacks, but you don't need to actually finish them off. If you have two charges of Fury of the Faithful and you're facing a large crowd or a horde of enemies, you can just go ahead and use the ability on that horde. The first hit is gonna be a crit and it's gonna increase your attack speed. Like we said, getting crits with melee weapons reduces the cooldown of your ability, so you're gonna get back your cooldown in a couple seconds. When you're fighting a horde, you should be able to use Fury every few seconds and you're gonna get it back immediately. I mentioned that this build also works with the combat axes, and I'm sure that you could make this work as well with other weapons, especially if they scale with crit. But the combat axes would obviously be fitting the most thematically with the fireman build here. If you try this build out with the combat axe, the Atlas MK8 works okay. Just make sure you have brutal momentum on it. This basically makes it so that you can cleave through more enemies, get more enemies hit in a single hit if you get a headshot kill with that hit. This is because normally the axe would get stuck on enemies with a heavy attack. If you get a headshot kill, it would go through them. This now allows you to cleave through multiple enemies. This would hit a total of four enemies and does a lot of damage to all of them. Even though the AoE damage is pretty good, the problem with that is that because it only hits four enemies, it's not gonna stagger any other enemy. This means that it has very bad crowd control, and you'd have to change your attack pattern to look something like this, where you'd use push attacks in between heavies. This will substantially reduce your DPS. What you would wanna do for full damage would be using the first heavy attack with animation cancelling, so that'd be using the first heavy, blocking and using it again quickly. If you use it fast, it should look like this. 
so I don't recommend the MK8 here. The axe that I do recommend you use is the Antax MK5. Why? Because it has better cleave on it. If you mouse over the cleave targets here, you can see that it gives you probably up to 1.8 at 80% cleave targets. And this really doesn't look like much, right? But if we again use brutal momentum on it, if we use this blessing on the weapon, it will actually cleave a lot more. With this axe, we use the light attacks, not the heavies. And the light here would have very good AoE damage and very good cleave. Obviously though, you want to hit the headshots here. Now another thing I have to mention about this weapon is that the push attack has pretty good damage and it will cleave through many enemies at once. I think it can hit a total of 8 or 9 enemies at once. The push attack would not be your best DPS, but what you can use it for is to quickly regenerate your ability, Fury, because by hitting more enemies you're also going to crit more enemies, which means that you're going to get your cooldown back quicker. It would still have less damage however, so if you want to do damage I still recommend using light attacks and aiming for headshots. If you're attacking any type of Ogren, you want to chain heavy attacks. For Maniacs, you'd use Light Attacks. With Ragers, generally you'd want to use the Push Attack to stagger them first, and then use Light Attacks. If you need to stagger the Ragers again, just use the Push Attack again. If there's a whole bunch of them, you can just spam the Push Attack. The way you want to build your MK5 combat axe is actually like this, although it has a red skin on it, but it is the MK5. What I recommend here is Brutal Momentum, always, as the first blessing. You want to get melee critical hit chance if you can. As a second blessing, I recommend Shred for the extra critical strike chance. With the Zealot, the more crit chance we have, the more crit chance we get, because of the Scourge node on the skull tree. The way that Scourge works is that if you hit an enemy with a melee attack and it crits, it applies bleeding. If you hit that enemy again while it's bleeding, you get more critical strike chance. If you have too much damage but not enough critical strike chance, well there's a good chance that you can kill an enemy right away before you get to hit it again while it's bleeding after a crit, which means that you lose out on your critical strike chance bonus that can go up to 30%. We want to hit a lot of crits because A it gives us toughness damage reduction and B it reduces the cooldown of our ability that by itself increases our damage, gives us more crit and gives us attack speed as well as a lot of defensiveness. Now let's use all that we learned and go purge some heretics. The following mission walkthrough, played on Auric Damnation, showcases all the things I just taught you. So continue watching if you want to see all these things played out in action. For the Emperor!
results so easily. The faithful should stand together, I.
refuse to risk. This is a fire zone, Reese!
You surprise me!
Yeah. 